So without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome our Chief, Darlene Logan, to provide us with the Sheeton Council update. Thank you. Howdy, everyone. Oh, this is so fun, seeing all these beautiful faces. I have been trying to give updates regularly, and it's, I have to look at a little black box and imagine faces. So this, this is amazing. This is, this is what we wanted. It's like a huge family reunion. So I like. <laughs> I like to say everybody hi at home that couldn't make it. And for those that are some, we have some in the hospital and some recovering from surgery. We're hoping for a speedy recovery. So before we start, I'd like a huge thank you to our staff, especially Tamara and Tashina. They have been, they're the ones that help get this get together. And and to our rocking elders who have been here and tirelessly working without even being asked. So Les and Jan Baker, thank you for all the work you've done volunteering. And so the last time everyone was able to get together was in May 2018. So this is how long this has been for us to finally all get together to meet, to reintroduce each other, to meet family we've never met before. Like this is, this is what we wanted. So, let's see. So we all have our council members. There's Joshua, Edward Joshua Seymour, Dominic Frederick, Marcel Gagnon, Crystal Gibbs, Helen Buzas. And these are the leaders you have selected to help me move our nation forward in a positive manner. And I would like to personally thank them, each and every one of them, for the support they have given me. And, and without them, we have to work as a team. So this, thank you. And so we have the staff, as we've mentioned, there's, they're all over the place. We had a plan to bring them all through one at a time, but they're all so busy. So they're here all weekend, as was council, we'll be here. If you have any questions, just come ask us. We're willing to help. It's usually like Barry said, where's the bathroom? <laughs> and as for the drum group, I got to mention, I did see Marcel was singing with him. There was foot tapping and Crystal was singing in the back. So good job. <laughs> so just for those of you that I have just met, so I'll just give a little bit of history of myself. So I've been working for the band for over 16 years in different capacities, mainly as an executive assistant. Then I was elected for council and I served three terms. And during that time, I was asked many, many times to run for chief and I've always turned them down because I told them I wasn't ready. I had to feel ready for myself. So just over a year and a half ago, I felt that I was ready, that I was, it was my, I could feel it. It was my turn, my time to try. So it's been one year and four months since I've been elected chief. And to tell you the truth, time has flown by. It's like the leaves even falling off the trees coming out here. I'm going, oh no, where'd summer go? So chief and council are elected and given authority under the, to act on behalf of the nation just the same as other previous chiefs and councils. Every chief and every council, since our community has entered modern times and to ha under INAC, chief and council, they have all worked, all of them, each and every one of them had worked for the nation and each and every one of them had a hand in getting them, getting our nation to where we are today. So any previous chief and councillors from way back when to now, or I'm pretty sure I speak on behalf of the nation. We all thank you. Oh. 
Okay, we are here, to, here today to update you on our progress, which we've been trying to do through Facebook and online, but, but this will be a little bit nicer. <laughs> so today is a positive day. It's about family reunion. It's about getting together, and it's about love. Like I haven't seen some of my family for a very long time, and it's just it's heartwarming to see them. So today, we don't want to bring up the past. We don't want to point fingers. I don't know. I'm, I'm I know I'm tired of hearing the past of what he did, she did. It's just I'm. Honestly, I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of hearing about the past too. So we want to move forward. So the past is the past. We learn from it and we move forward. And we're moving forward. So this, this is a positive time. And I see Kilani here. She's just got a beautiful smile. I just want to welcome her home safely. She made it home safe. If you could stand up quickly and let everybody know, because everyone's read about you on Facebook. So <laughs> we just want to let you know you're home safe. So. <laughs> so she she's on she's on her healing path and her healing journey, and we wish, wish her the best of luck. So as a positive matter, you mentioned about the AGA. And that was one of the things we wanted to do is get our elders together because they're our knowledge keeper, keepers and for advice. Like if you ask some of the elders around, they know I ask them for advice. I ask for their input. And one thing I learned from them, I have to tell you <laughs> about my grandfather. Because I'm First Nations, I have to tell a story. So, so my grandfather used to always tell me stories as a child. And I know. And I never believed him. I was always like, oh, sure, Grandpa. Like, right, right. Well, one day I met another elder and they told me what my grandfather did. And I was like, what? He actually did that? I thought it was just one of Grandpa's stories. So if there's any youth in here, and even young adults, listen to your elders. Listen to the stories they tell because they're not just stories, they actually happened. So another thing about a positive, uh, AGA and our CPP, which we want all community involvement in this. This is important because this is how we're going to move our nation forward together. Another positive, we can see this today is about positives. So we had, we had a couple band members with businesses and so we try and help them out as much as we can. Like the beading, that some of you may have beads, uh, earrings, or uh, pins in your bags. Those are banned businesses. They're doing them online, and, and so we got them to help. So another company had a construction company. So we told them we had renovations coming up. He put in a bid. He was a successful bidder. So he got to renovate all the houses on the reserve. We are, housing was able to secure funding from INAC, which was awesome. So we're happy to say that the renovations are finally done. All the houses are up to code and they're beautiful. Like, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then we introduced that company because he's a construction company. We introduced him to LDN where he did some clearing, I think, and some fencing. So he's done really well and now he's spread his wings and he's working off in the industries and just having good for him, like good for them. And during that time we had another band member who had a painting company and they painted all the things and they're still doing ongoing work for the band and they're doing very well. And we all know, well some of you might not know him, but Victor Morris, he's an amazing painter and he sells paintings to supplement his income and he does beautiful work. So we have purchased a lot of paintings off of him to decorate our offices and our health offices coming up. And uh, we have such a great relationship with the city and regional district that anything that comes up, the first thing they do is give us a call. We need to name something. We need the duck health language and right away they, they get a hold of us. Like, 
like the Marriott Hotel that some of you are staying at, you'll notice the Duck Health name in the rooms there. And we're having Duck Health names everywhere. We have it up at UMBC, but now we have the new pool being built, which is supposed to be ready by 2023, 20, I think it was. Right away they phoned and asked us for, because there's one wall, it's a huge wall, it's a big mural. So Kim Gucci will be doing the mural. So it's a Clately Tanay. So Clately's, Clately Tanay is, we're on the map. We're getting known as, I think Helen's gonna talk about our declaration. But I'll let you know right now that our declaration has been heard. We set out our declaration in, on Aboriginal Day. And after that, I've had, I was blown away. Since then, I've had like seven ministers come to our office to meet us because they heard of our declaration. So we're on the map. We're, we're being known. Clately's here, been here forever, and we're not going away. So, as you can see, our beautiful health center, it's gorgeous. Okay, this is a story. <laughs> so, we got approved in 2015. They told us, once we did the community consultation, this would be a 19-month project. So, it's been since 2015, 2016, after community consultation. It's been such a slow process, and then COVID hit and shut the world down. And then when we finally reopened, it was supplies. The world shut down, we had no supplies. So officially, this is not our building until they, this is First Nations Health building, until they hand over the keys, which have, from my understanding, there's a few more tweaks that they have to do inside before it's officially ours. But it, like I said, it's been a process. If anyone's lived through construction, I hate construction. It takes way too long, way too long. Like, so just hopefully we'll be able to have an opening with it soon, but it's going to house everything. It's an amazing building. It's long overdue. And it'll be a safe place for, for our members to come. There's an elder spot and a safe for our nurse and our doctor, Dr. Todd, for when he comes to see our members. So... The elders meeting. So I've been coming to the elders for a while now. We've had to name, rename, change the name to O'Grady. Um, excuse me, the mayor, <clears throat> mayor and council from Prince George came to us and said, you know, we gotta change the name. And they asked us, well, what should we change it? And council all agreed, we don't know. We'll bring it to our elders. It's they're the ones, it's their healing journey. And so we did, we brought it to them, but I'm horrible with the language. I can write it, but I cannot say it. So Joshua, do you remember how to say? So you're learning opportunity. Oh, it's a learning opportunity. <laughs> Joshua, how do you say? What is it called? Duck health tea. Now, what does it mean? Okay, he says, Indigenous People Pathway. So, yes, I have to learn on <laughs> my language. So, I do have a job for elders who are listening here today at your AGM. We have one more job. I have another name for you. So, Fortis came to Clately Tanay and said, hey, we have money. We're going to donate money for a park. And so, that's how we got the park on the south side. But it's there, and it's unnamed. So we need you elders to choose a name for it. Like we have the Ron Seymour Memorial Park. So the south side, it's up to you. Whatever you guys choose. So we could do an actual, with Fortis, do an opening with the actual Clayton Tene name. So I am so glad that everyone came. I'm going to keep repeating this and repeating this because this is so fun. Like this, this morning, I had such a blast walking around saying, okay, come with me this is your cousin this is your cousin this is your cousin this is your cousin and finally I told her I said okay if anybody with tan skin they're your cousin <laughs> so next up we have Councillor Crystal Gibbs
Thank you, Chief, and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome home everybody who has flown or driven in. So nice to see you all. And thank you, Elder Ron and the cast and drummers, Chief and Barry for emceeing. Um, I'm just gonna start off where Chief left off. Um, so our nation is in the process of working with other First Nations about shared territory because it's about time our nations do so as we did in the past. Before I talk about our future, I'm going to review some of our recent achievements. And as for this, this is our first gathering event in three years. I wanna take a few extra minutes to talk about the positive progress we've made. The progress that brings me the greatest satisfaction is seeing our members do well. When our members do well, our nation gets stronger. We are currently supporting over 12 members who are pursuing new opportunities through post-secondary education. We have members working on our staff team, but also in our band-owned businesses. Those include LTN Contracting, Tano Fuels, LTN Environmental Consulting, and the House of Ancestors. Members have been very clear with our Chief and Council, as well as past Chief and Councils, that jobs for members is key priority and that's definitely still a key priority for us. I can assure you that this does still remain a priority. The way to, we do ensure more jobs for Clately members is to take control over what happens in our, our unceded territory. I spoke earlier about LTN contracting. The first order of business for our new chief and council last April was to buy out our business partners and own our long, logging company outright. And now we do. We're extremely proud of manager Glenn Bjorkland, who is also a member, and his team for the excellent work they do for our company as well as our nation. We recently signed an agreement with the province of BC to acquire the largest First Nation woodlot license in BC. The license provides us with harve harvesting rights of over 400,000 cubic meters. Um, that's each year. This means more work for LTN contracting and other contractors in our area, and more job opportunities for our members. But what it also means is that we co-manage on an equal basis of an area almost the same size of Mount Robson Provincial Park. We get to have an equal say with the province of BC in how over 217,000 square kilometers is managed. This is a huge opportunity to manage these forests our way. Not only for our timber production, but also to protect the old growth areas, traditional use areas, and to support increasing populations of moose, deer, and other animals by, that our members use for food and traditional uses. We believe this new opportunity has expedi was expedited by our new LTFN declaration, which Chief spoke about, and I believe Councillor Buzaz will also speak about. We mailed copies out of our, out of our, sorry, copies of our declaration out in May to all members. And then we made the public announcement on National Indigenous Peoples Day, June 21st of this year. It simply states that our nation has never signed or given away any of our ownership to our unceded territory. This is a reminder to governments, industry, and everyone else who lives, works, and plays in our ancestral lands. Our declaration is now the starting point for consideration of all new projects, programs, and initiatives put forth by the governments, industry, and organizations. And now with that, I'm going to welcome up Councillor Buzaz. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. Our declaration says that our unceded territories is basis of who we are as the Clately Tanay and who we are as a nation. I can assure you that the governments are aware of our declaration. And our existing business and community partners are aware of it also. Our declaration is not meant to prevent progress, sustainability, use of resource in our territory. 
Our declaration says we own our territory and moving forward, things will be done our way. We have occupied our territory for over 9,000 years. And one of the other things that we are working right and that I'm so proud of is the construction next to us. Uh, we hoped that we would have be able to accommodate tours of our new health center during our AGM. However, there are still a few more tasks that must be completed before we take ownership and responsibility of the building. This project has been uh, years in the making and I'd like to thank previous uh, Councillor Luella Nome for, uh, I think she started it up, I remember years ago, but uh, acknowledge her on that. Uh, uh, next is the new child care centre in Clayley today Memorial Park near the exploration place. We anticipate that this project will get underway next spring. I know we have members and other others in the community anxious to enroll their children in our new child care centre. When I think of our children, I think of our future. I think about what kind of world we are leaving them. I will ask Councillor Joshua to explain. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Joshua Seymour. Thank you, Helen. Uh, I want to go off script quickly, and I, uh, I want to say um, welcome to everybody who lives out of town, and welcome to the people who have never been home. So welcome home. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hot up here. Uh, this is why I'm so proud of our nation uh, who is working with companies uh, in the green and clean energy sector. One of them is here with us this weekend. RBO's Biotech is building a new biofuels plant on Pult Mill Road. RBO's uh, Biotech is, um, are, they, are they here right now? Oh, they're in the back there. Okay. Uh, they approached early on about their vision to take a low-grade wood fiber and turn it into biofuels. Uh, sometimes that is not as... E as that is not always what happened in our past, boy. Uh, and it comes to, when it comes to industry. Um, we have said yes, and we are enjoying a very special partnership with Arbios. We have also signed an MOU with a company called Fortescue. This company has a vision to create a globally significant hydrogen project that will involve many First Nations across Canada. Hydrogen is another clean, green energy fuel, and we are very proud to be part of this project. Uh, we continue to do well, uh, we continue as well to work with our forest industry partners and welcoming new opportunities to work with other companies who respect us and acknowledge our declaration. I'm also very proud of our council and administration for saying no to a project promoted by a company which didn't respect us and our ownership of our lands. West Coast Oil Fins is perhaps the best example in recent years of a company who thought it could come into our territory, make a few promises about jobs and training, and then move on without us. We made it very clear at every level of government involved in reviewing the proposed project of the West Coast oil fins was not welcome in clayton Tenay territory. Hopefully the company has gotten the message. I'm also very proud of the, the recent partnerships that we have developed in the community. We've enjoyed excellent relationships with the city of Prince George and the regional district of Fraser Fort George for the past 20 years. Uh, we meet monthly as a G2G leaders group with the city and regional district to discuss a range of important issues and topics. Uh, this was a project initiated in 2020 by past Chief Clay Poutney just after the COVID-19 pandemic started. We have also trusted the exp exploration place with our history and artifacts in a partnership that is over 20 years old. Our newer partnerships include Chief Logan sitting on the board of directors at the Prince George Community Foundation. The Prince George Community Foundation Board had for some years a seat for the mayor of Prince George um, and they decided two years ago that it was time to have a seat for the chief of Clayton Tenay. It is a wonderful community organization that does exceptional work in supporting groups who do support Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. And most recently we signed a partnership agreement with the Prince George Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber granted us a lifetime membership in 2021 as their way of ensuring that we are included in their work in the community. Our partnership in 
agreement will guide development of our partnership in the years ahead. And just last month, we traveled to McBride to participate in our annual meeting with McBride, McBride Mayor and Council. None of this could have happened without the fantastic support of our administration and staff. You can see them all working today. They're the ones who aren't sitting down running around. So thank them if you see them. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to our, our executive director and our administration, as well as our team, who is an, an invaluable advisor to the chief and council for an effective staff leader who works uh, and supports our team uh, and the work of its members. I also want to pay tribute to our finance leader and deputy executive uh, director, Tofik Islam, and his team. One of the highlights of this past year was that Tofik Islam informed us that we had won the Aboriginal Finance Officers Association of BC 2021 BC First Nations Best Practice Award. It was a very proud day for our nation. Uh, now I'll give way for Councillor Marcel to continue on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want, I want to start by saying, I think as you age, you, you notice things that you, you never seen before, or noticed before rather. And I'm sitting here looking out on the audience and I notice there's five chiefs here presently. And if I get the order right, I would say, uh, welcome uh, Peter Kwa, uh, one of our original chiefs. Barry Seymour, Dominic Frederick, Clayton Poutney, and uh, Dolly Logan. I do have some notes that is, were prepared for me, but I'm not really good at reading notes. Um, what I do want to say, and if you don't mind if I stray from uh, um it's been um, almost two years now since I've been in council. And I could say that because of my age, um, things have changed so much. I remember reading somewhere where a mother or a teacher said, don't bother raising your children the way you were raised because that world doesn't exist anymore. And I'm truly finding that out being on council. But I see things from a, from a different perspective now. And the word that keeps jumping out at me is in inclusiveness. Uh, transparency we sometimes use. There has to be inclusiveness in everything we do. You are the ones who determine the future. You give us our marching orders. You give us our direction. There should be a special council and a special seat at all the meetings for the elders. There should be, in my vision, a place where we assemble to meet regularly, where the people can come and be part of it and ask questions. I've learned these things and um, I want to thank all those people who, who voted for me to be on council. You gave me the greatest learning experience of my life and, and, and for that I am, I am forever grateful. Masicho, thank you. Who's up? <laughs> Councillor Dominic, I will steal your chair, please. Notice I'm short too. Still short and getting shorter. Uh, good afternoon. Members of the community of Lake Litane, uh, welcome home. Welcome to all of you. And I was going to acknowledge the Chiefs, but he beat me to it. But I acknowledge you anyways, you know, you're, you're there and we acknowledge you for all the work that you've done and, and moving forward. 
Um, I will uh, conclude our chief and council report this morning by talking a little about the future. This is timely as tomorrow morning our lands and taxation manager Barry Shima and his team will lead us through the launch of our new comprehensive community plan process. Here are few of my thoughts to this to get us started thinking about our future of Little Itane First Nation. Our specific claim for lands we lost when we were forced out of what is now Little Itane Memorial Park has been accepted. I hope our future includes a decision by the specific claims tribunal that will compensate us fairly the value of those lands taken from us over 100 years ago. Our future includes the benefits of the settlement we reached with Enbridge from the pipeline explosion in October 2018 that occurred just a short distance from where we are seated. Over there. <laughs> so you're supposed to all look over there. <laughs> our future includes, oh, just read. Our, our future includes the, oh no, I see the future where people come from all over the world to spend the time in our ancient forest, Chanto Wadajet. Ours is one of the only three island forests on the planet. We partnered two years ago with the federal and BC governments to enhance the ancient forest. The project will allow us to create an experience for tourists and residents that is second to none in the world. It is now my pleasure to call on me. <laughs> I don't think I was supposed to read that. <laughs> A little humor. Thank you, Domo. <laughs> Our future includes benefits from the special management that will, that will be used in our First Nations woodland license area. Our future will see the new child care center, new housing for members, expansion of the Northside subdivision, enhancement of education, health, and wellness programs, and services for members. Oh. I read somebody else's notes. Our future includes from the special management that we will be used in the First Nation Woodland License. Oh, how come I'm reading it again? Did you give me two notes? Okay, sorry. And our future will include transfer of more Crown land to Tlaidli Tane ownership, both in the city and in the surrounding area of the Litani traditional territory. I could go on and on, but I know we need to give Joe some time to give his update, then we will receive a tabled financial report for 21-22. I wanna thank the Eller Society who today later will elect a new board of directors. When our chief and council was elected, we said that we would involve our elders more in making important decisions and guiding our involvement in the community. Council asked our elder society to come up with a new name for O'Grady Road in College Heights, which they have done. The city council, city council has a step back, tie as a new name. Um, my, my interpretation of Dak Tai is, uh, has to do with the, the travelers of the river. The Dak have traveled the rivers for centuries and centuries on as a, as a corridor from each reserve and hunting and fishing and so on. That, that's my own interpretation. Um, plans are being developed to get the street signs changed to good signs, dark hill signs. So if you don't know your language, you better learn your language. It's like me, I don't know my language really good. Eh? Like, 
They taught me, when I was in residential school, they taught me all the dirty words. That's all I knew. Eh? When I came back, eh? man, did I ever get in trouble. Eh? Like, you know. I wasn't getting strapped. I was getting strapped at home. <laughs> Just kidding. Our future also includes the Elder Society participating in the CCP process and continuing to advise counsel in an own important matters. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Have a good day. Love you all. Thank you, counselors. So um, let me conclude by thanking all our elders and our members for your trust in our council and our administration for the support in moving forward. So we're reaching back. This is the only part of history I really want to bring back. And the only part I want to be where's the finger pointing. For example, it would be like, Domo, do you, do you have any stories from your history? from your grandparents and stuff. This is where we want to re back, reach back. We want to regain our history, our culture, and our governance practices to ensure a bright and vibrant future for our children and their children and their children and future children. So we need to bring back our old ways. I believe that we have a fabulous future ahead with us, for, for us. And I think we all can do it. I think we can do it all together. We can make this. We can a positive, green, positive future for our kids. And to welcome everybody back again. So I'm, we are going to be around all weekend from all the way till Joel West leaves. We'll be back here tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. So if you have any questions, we're here. Come, come see us, come track us down. So I have one more positive for our nation. We have an elder who was recently appointed Chancellor of Un University of British Columbia. This is an amazing young lady, has represented Clayley Tenay for so many years, like back before when I started, but way back then. I'd like when I first started working for the band, I was, I was working when Domo was chief, and he was like, Darlene, like, she's the culture. She's. So, Darlene is part of the Kwa family, and I have asked, I guess, our monarchy, our eldest living female Kwa representative to help me hand a gift to That's who I'm calling up, our eldest monarchy, <laughs> Darlene McIntosh, or Darlene McIntosh, and Angeline Gervais to help hand gifts to her. This is an amazing honor for these two young ladies. So I'll turn it back over to Barry, and then we'll be on to their next part of our agenda.